All right, it's game time. Appointment setting virtually. So what we're gonna cover today is, I'm gonna tell you right off the rip what we're not gonna cover. Cold DMs, that's a B. Cold DMs and cold email. Now you're gonna ask, why wouldn't we cover cold EMs and cold emails? Cold emails, and because of sales reps, anyone can do it. You don't need a sales rep or an appointment setter to do this shit. Right, that, that's not where the good money is, right? So what we're gonna focus on is calling. Now, when I say the word calling, you think of two things. You think of cold calling, or maybe you're smart enough and you think of warm leads. Now, let me tell you the truth about cold calling, is we're in the era of marketing, of advertising. Cold calling really doesn't exist in good opportunities anymore. It's very rare that you go into a good opportunity and you just call people whose fucking information was scraped from the, the dark web. That, that's not what we do. We're looking for opportunities and the ones that we're gonna help you guys find is ones with opt-in leads. Meaning your business, your company, the, the company that you represent, they ran an advertising campaign that you see on YouTube, social media, Facebook, whatever it is. And people are like, this looks pretty cool. I'm gonna raise my hand, put my information in. And then you, as an appointment center, call them. So it's not really a cold call, it's more, like a, it's more like a warm lead. And you give them a ring, and this is your framework. Right, homies, his name's Jim, right? Jim's the guy we're calling. My boy, Jim. First part, break ice, build rapport. Give Jim a call. Hey, is this Jim? Cool. Awesome, Jim. It's just Nate with XYZ. I saw about 20 minutes ago you filled out a form to see if you'd be eligible for some form of XYZ. Is that right? Cool. Ice and rapport, right? So you can start it off too. You can ask them how they're doing, stuff like that, right? But the big thing here is I don't want to just sound like a sales guy. That's, that's not what I want to do. If you want to say, hey, Jim. Hey, is this Jim? Cool. Awesome. Jim, it's just Nate. Hope you're doing all right, man. Reason why I wanted to give you a ring is do that. I don't like to use the how you doing because at the end of the day, I don't really think people give a shit. That's just me, right? Ice break, rapport. This part, pretty simple. Don't overdo it. Where are you, so where are you from, Jim? Like, I don't really want to go that deep. I've never found success with that route. This portion, it's vague. It's simple. It's brief. Let's get to the good stuff. Now I want to do info gathering. Now remember here, guys, they rose their hand. We are calling on them. That is the frame I wanna have. I'm not this needy sales guy. They rose their hand. They put in their information for the campaign, right? So about 20 minutes ago, you filled out this form, see if you'd be you know, a good fit for X, Y, Z. You remember that? Cool, awesome. So I guess what made you take the time out of day to fill out your form in the first place? All right, I'm digging a little bit deeper in the hope, the whole purpose of this stage is A, I wanna get ammo for later, right? But most importantly, guys, I wanna know the reason. What's their motivation here? Why'd they do it? What are they looking for, right? I wanna know their motivation. What made him take the time out of your day, right? That's a good question. So what made you take the time out of your day, Jim, to uh, fill out the form? Awesome, you're looking for more information, cool. So as far as information goes, is there anything you were you know, looking for specific? Cool, stuff like that, right? And then, if you're doing like a, you know, an info offer, or essentially you're selling like a course, a mastermind, blank all that shit together, right? Is I wanna know what they do now. And in the info gathering stage, if we go a level deeper, what I start doing is I start qualifying. This is where I ask them, so Jim, right now, what do you, uh, what do, you do for work? Awesome, you work in a factory, sweet. And now this might be too personal if you don't want to answer it, that's okay. But uh, what do you do in terms of monthly income? 3,000 a month, sweet. So as far as 3,000 a month goes, you know, is that something you're all right with? Is it something you want to increase? You know, what is the, uh, the feeling there? Something you want to increase, cool. So what are you trying currently to do to increase that number, right? I'm, I'm digging here, but in a good way. And when I say an example, like that's, that's a good way to go about it. 
a bad way to go about info gathering. It's just where it's like this fucked up, manipulative thing that I see like going around the internet. Like, oh, how do you feel, you know, emotionally about $3,000? I don't want to do that. I just want to peel back the layers of the onion. I want to know if this guy has a problem because I cannot solve a problem that doesn't exist. So when he starts giving me answers, oh yeah, you know, I do 3,000 a month right now. Cool, is that you know in line with what you're hoping to do or is there you know more you're pursuing there? There's more you're pursuing there. How so? You know, what's the, what, what are you working towards? Awesome, $10,000 a month. Cool, now I have a motivation. Is motivation 10K? He's at 3K. There is a bridge to get there. That bridge right here, this guy, is our stuff, baby. It's our stuff, all right? So in this phase, I'm gonna find the problem. The problem is he wants to get to 10K, he's at 3K, works in a factory, cool. But as far as you know, working in the factory goes, money aside, um, how's everything going there? Oh, you know, it's all right. I mean, work 12 hours a day, it sucks, man, I hate it. I don't really, can't stand it much longer. Pain, I have pain now. So in this stage, I wanna get ammo, I wanna find the motivation, and I wanna find the pain. Sometimes, pain can be the motivator, right? I'm using qualifying questions. How much money does he have? Does he have enough money for our stuff? Am I selling something that's worth three grand, five grand, 10 grand? It depends on your industry, but if he's making three grand a month, and my offer is 10K, Jim might not be the best fit, right? So this is where we start to get into qualifying. Now, after qualifying goes, Right where I've asked him what he does now, how's everything going there? Cool. If you know if there was something you could change about that, what would that be? Oh, you want to make more money? Cool. Does, and that gets you closer to your goal, right? Awesome. So I know his goal is 10K, and now I get to the point where I can actually start presenting a solution because he might be a good fit, right? So I can start presenting a solution, right? I'm not I'm not just gonna hit him with the kitchen sink here. Realize in this stage when you start to present the solution and that's to say jim i got what you need man it's not like that i want to I like slowly dip my toe in the water here right use them i like to use like hypotheticals here so let's just say jim you know hypothetically there was a way where you could get from 3k to ten thousand dollars a month is that something i don't know you'd be open-minded to or something you'd be completely opposed to you won't be completely opposed to it. Cool. So as far as getting to that 10K, you know, what does that mean? Because we're just talking about numbers on the screen here. What does that mean to you? And, I, and, I'm, and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting him attached to that solution. I'm presenting it in like a modest way. I'm not just like hanging, dropping my skibs, showing him my junk. I'm presenting it in a modest way. And at this point, it's important to know using things like, so if it does check out, Right? You know, if you were a good fit, you know, if all the boxes were checked and this is something that we could actually help you do, and then you get in your offer, what, you know, what is the solution there? Do you help save money? Cool, we could reduce monthly expenses, help you save money, there's no upfront costs. This is the point where you wanna summarize the best part of your deal, right? What does your product and service help with? Does it help people scale? Does it help people make more money? Does it help them get in better shape? This is when you wanna start present that. Right? So, you know, Jim, if there was a way we could help you get in a better shape, right? And it wasn't those things you'd have to, you know, sell an arm and a leg to pay for it, and it helped you get there. You know, I'd love to give you more information about that. It's really not my forte, you know, and quite frankly, I don't have the time, but what I would be willing to do is tomorrow between four and seven, we could book another call and I could run you through it then, and it's quick. That transitions into the close. <sighs> So in this whole portion, this is frame. This whole concept is frame. I'm taking the prospect's hand and I'm walking them to the finish line. The finish line is closing the appointment. It is setting a time. That's what we call closing an appointment is where time is on the calendar. Now, if we jump back into this, when I say, you know, between four or seven tomorrow, what do you think would work best for you? Oh, you know, I don't have time, I don't have time. Yeah, and Jim, at the end of the day, this isn't like a, you know, eight to 12 hour thing. We're just gonna show you how it looks if you would have done it last month. So it's super simple. So between four or seven, what do you think works best for you? Seven, cool. Jim says 7 p.m. <clears throat> now when Jim says 7 p.m., 
most beginners like you. All right, Jim, we'll see you tomorrow. Hang up the phone. It's not what we want to do. We want to make this appointment sticky. Our goal isn't to just get people to throw some half-assed commitment to a time. It's get them to actually commit, to be actually invested, and to actually remember to show up for the closer for that call. So when he says 7 p.m., I'm gonna make sure you're sure. Gotcha. Is there any reason or you know anything you can see coming up that you know might get in the way of you hopping on that call at 7 p.m.? No? Cool, you sure? You're sure? Cool. That's three ways I just went about right there to make sure he can be on this call. So two more confirms. And then from there, remember what we talked about earlier. When these people raise their hand, they put in their information, right? Jim put in his information. That's how we got his phone number. That's how we got his name. We also get his email and I'm going to use this shit to make this appointment rock solid. So what I'm going to do, Jim, cool. So I have a terrible memory. I don't know about you, but mine shot. I want to make sure we don't forget you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you over an email with the appointment time. So we both make sure we're not wasting each other's time. Sound fair? Cool. And then bang, I send him an email, a third confirmation of the time. And that is the basics, the fundamentals when it comes to setting a rock solid appointment that will actually stick.